the lush fields you see behind me are rice or paddy fields inside the national rice research institute of india one of india's very old research institutions in agriculture and i have with me dr himanshu pathak who is the director of the national rice research institute uh, dr pathak what does rice mean for india rice means life for most of the indians in particularly the indians who are living in eastern part of our country northeast south and the country as a whole around 65% of india's population depends on rice not only as a staple food but also the major source of their livelihood major source of their income this is not only a food for the people of eastern and northeast part of this country this is their life this is their culture this is their heritage mm -hmm. so therefore when we say rice it is a synonymous to the life of almost all indians so so what is the major achievements of this institute how many varieties have you developed what what happens and what is the future i would say that the major achievement has been to take this country from sip to mouth to a self sufficient in rice production and also to export around 10 million tons of rice annually to other countries before this green revolution in rice and also in wheat as you know that this country used to import rice sometimes poor quality rice but for last few years we are not only self sufficient but we are also exporting 10 million tons so far this institute has released 133 rice varieties which are occupying around 18 to 20% of rice areas of this country so is the most of the rice which we grow in india indigenously developed or have we imported varieties etc most of these are indigenously developed though we have got a very strong collaboration with international rice research institute but of late for last 2 3 decades most of the varieties which are being grown in different parts of this country are developed indigenously with our own scientists with all the genetic materials which were available with us and we have used all those techniques and tools you mentioned we are exporting from ship to mouth we have reached a situation where we are net exporters of food yes. what is the quantum of earning of the exports merely from rice from rice if you include basmati as well as non basmati total amount is around 50000 crore rupees per year you are joking 50000 crores yes yes and when i say quantity it is around 10 million tons out of which 6 million ton is non basmati 4 million tons is basmati rice because most people hear of exports from the information technology industry saying wipro tcs infosys we don't hear much about rice earning 50000 crores annually even more than that even more than that and this export quantity is increasing year after year and you will be surprised to know that india not only export rice to european countries to middle east even countries like china which is one of the major rice producer of the world is also expecting to import rice from our country so so what is the future what is the specific developments in rice because in a changing climate what do you expect from the because the country expects food security to continue and in that scenario how does rice fit in and what are you doing towards uh, developing varieties which are climate resilient right climate change is a reality and the most adverse effect of climate change will be on agriculture crop like rice wheat maize and all others are going to be very very seriously affected because of climate change but fortunately in last few years we have developed few varieties which we call them as climate smart varieties these are the varieties which can tolerate flood and also drought at the same time because as you know that you have got large areas of this country which are affected by both these stresses mm -hmm. sometimes flood and then maybe after just few days or so it will be again drought so last year for example we have released this institute has released two varieties sierdhan 801 and sierdhan 802 
which are tolerant to submergence and drought at the same time. These two varieties have been already been notified by Government of India and from next year onwards we will be able to provide good amount of seed to the farmers of this country so that they will not be affected adversely because of climate change. A lot of people say when you cultivate paddy, it releases a lot of methane and in a changing climate that would affect both climate change and how do you fight climate change? So both aspects, are you working on both? Yes, we are working on this aspect rather for around 10-15 years. But there is a myth. Let me first clarify that myth. In 1991, a report came from United States of America that Indian rice fields, which cover around 43-44 million hectares, it emits around 38 million tons of methane. That time, Government of India, ICR, didn't have any kind of data. But after that report, we started systematically experiments in several institutes, including NRI Katak, IARI New Delhi, and few others. And then we could estimate with our own measurements that the actual emission of methane from rice fields is only 3.3 to 3.5 million tons. It is just one-tenth of what was reported earlier. I remember what Dr. A.P. Mitra that's was right. a key that's person right. in that that's from right. the National Physical Laboratory that's to right. bust this myth yeah. that yeah. we have a lot of methane emission. And also people had talked about flatulence from cows causing climate change. But in the future, what is the budget you have for this institute? Because if you say India earns 50,000 crores annually, in comparison, what is your annual budget? No, that is export only, 50,000 crores. If we see the only price of this institute, the varieties which we have released from this institute and the varieties which are covering around 18 to 20 percent of area, the annual value of the produce of NRI varieties is more than 48,000 crores. That is the annual value of NRI varieties which are being grown within this country. Now, our budget including salary, pension, and several other things, is around 100 crores, out of which only 15 to 16 crores is there for research. But we are fortunate to get a good amount of budgetary support from our externally aided projects. But if India has to become food secure, with an increasing population, we are already 1.3 billion, and increasing, what happens? How much more budgetary support do you need? What I would say that budget is not a very major constraint so far as Indian Council of Agriculture Research is concerned. Of course, whenever you get more money, we'll be able to do better work, better research, better development. But even at the current stage also, we have got sufficient amount of budgetary support to carry out the research which are absolutely required for this country. And the way the research and development, particularly in the areas of rice science, rice research is going on, we can assure that we will be able to secure this country from the adverse impacts of climate change and also other externalities, whatever agriculture in general and rice science in particular it faces. So, you are assuring the country that we don't go back to ship to mouth again? That is certainly not. I am 100% sure that that day will never come when this country will again become safe to mouth. Only what we need to do is how to improve the nutritional security of this country. Food security is not a major challenge. We will be able to achieve it and we have already achieved it. But nutrition security is still a major concern and for which we are already working on that direction to develop biofortified rice varieties. Two, for example, two rice varieties which are richer in protein, Siardhan 310 and Siardhan 311, these contain more than 10% protein. Just for your information, that other ordinary varieties of rice, which are popularly grown by farmers of this country, those varieties contain only 6 to 7% protein. But these two varieties contain more than 10% protein. Similarly, some other varieties have been developed which contains more amount of micronutrients, particularly zinc. So we are already working towards that direction. I am sure nutritional security also will not be a very distant dream and we will be able to achieve that. So that was Dr. Pathak, Director of the National Rice Research Institute, assuring us that what we saw in ship to mouth 
will never ever get repeated for the country what he is saying is that they are trying to ensure better nutritional security so one step ahead food security he is saying assured nutritional security is what he is working on so india need not worry that in a changing climate we may well become a net importer of food he assures that india would continue to be a net exporter of food grains inside the national rice research institute in katak pallav bagla